tombs are celebrated by people in all three Abrahamic faiths and holy sites for us all. Yet 200 yards away from the tombs exists a wall that separates one religion from the other, held up by soldiers with big guns. Not even 200 yards away from where Abraham rests, his covenant is broken. Discarded. We, humanity, have been <clears throat> more concerned with the land promise than the moral covenant presented. We cannot understand one another. Barriers of religion and language and culture and, 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 we cannot understand one another. It makes me wish that the gust of wind, like the Holy Spirit, would blow over us all and help to open our eyes and see what is real and what is true and what is good. Help us to communicate from the core of our humanity. The Pentecost reading, heard every year, still has the power to wrench the gut and inspire wonder. What is going on? Even 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, people of all nations are gathered and despite the odds, because of a miracle, they understood one another. When the Spirit, the breath, the Ruah, the Holy Spirit of God comes down among them, they understand one another. The feeling of rightness and comprehension dawns. And yet, immediately, people mistrusted the Spirit. It's too good to be true. They must be drunk. How could God's peace at once take over and people understand one another? It seems so out of reach, so unobtainable that we give up. Even when asked what one would want for the world, one responds, world peace. And everyone smiles and sighs happily and then turns attention back to things at hand like how to keep the kids from fighting today or paying the mortgage or finding a job or that project around the house that you've been putting on for weeks. Make world peace isn't particularly what one wakes up and thinks following the question, what do I want to do today? God's language of peace is beyond us, humans as we are. But God comes to us in our own languages to speak truth to talk of peace and to inspire hope that someday, someday, we will get there. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Pentecost ends Easter season reminding us that we don't practice resurrection by our own strength, but we have the strength of the Holy Spirit's power among us in a community called church. Peace may seem out of our sight right now, but we are not working for the end goal in and of ourselves. We trust in the gift of the Holy Spirit and the community of church surrounding to make it possible for the future. <clears throat> Archbishop, Archbishop Oscar Romero wrote the following prayer. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it's even beyond our vision. We, we accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent, magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that can be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds knowing, already planted knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and 
and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders. We are ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Romero's prayer empowers us to do small things in the world with great love, recognizing that we cannot possibly do it alone. Further, the kingdom is beyond our vision. It was beyond the vision of the people who were close to Jesus then, too. Peter pulls back into his memory of older text to explain the tongues of fire in universal language. Recognizing that something, something big, was happening to his community, Peter first draws attention to texts that may help explain. The Spirit is poured out upon everyone. Sons and daughters prophesy visions and dreams of what will be glorious miracles. Everything will seem reversed, and those turning to God, turning to what is true and just and good, will be saved. All of this described as what would be the kingdom in the last days, because it was beyond the vision of even those trying to describe it 